welcome to Homegrown. This is episode three of our raised bed garden project and today we're talking about drip irrigation and the soil. Um, first things first, we're going to get right into the drip irrigation. I'm going to go over a few components of you know, what we're going to be using in our drip irrigation system. You know, one thing to keep in mind, I strongly recommend you guys look at using a drip irrigation system in your garden for multiple reasons. The biggest reason is uh, water evaporation and wastage. Usually uh, with more traditional you know, sprinklers, you get actually a lot of water evaporation by spreading the water through the air, where um, your drip tubes or drip emitters actually emit the soil right directly on the soil um, to the plants right where they need them, so you're not gonna actually get as much water evaporation. And then you're also gonna have actually less, you know, you'll, you'll be less worried about uh, things like mold and funguses growing on your plants because they're constantly dripping and soaking wet and stuff. So I'm just gonna go over some of the, the uh, components to our irrigation system here. Again, this is just a reference for you guys. If you guys wanna, you know, cheap out and just buy some soaker hose or maybe you just have a sprinkler, you don't wanna spend any more money, you don't have to do any of this, but this is definitely the way I would recommend um, to really get a good irrigation system in your garden. Um, another good thing about drip irrigation is, uh, you know, I like to travel a lot um, and, you know, in the summer I'm usually pretty busy, um, so I like to use one of these things, just a simple timer. I can program it um, to come on every day for how long I want, multiple times a day throughout the day, um, and this really takes care of my, uh, my uh, water needs. This is just a simple timer. It's super easy to program. It just screws right into the end of your hose or on the spigot of your, um, the side of your house. Um, and basically you can just program it to come on for 15 minutes, five minutes, you know, really whatever um, based on, you know, your soil needs. So depending on the type of the time of year or how warm or how dry it is, you can go out here and kind of regulate your garden, how much water you're giving it. Um, the next component of our drip irrigation system, this is just a simple check valve or a backflow preventer. Um, some municipalities or counties actually require this by law. Um, so basically we just kind of screw that on the end. Um, so we just have a... Um, a check valve in there so just like water's not going to come back into our system and you know eventually into our drinking water and contaminate any of that. Um, next we have just a simple filter. Um, <clears throat> this is kind of, it's a general filter, it's not a dechlorinizer or anything. I'm using township water which they do put chlorine in the water. I don't have any filter for that. Um, you know I would recommend getting one. I don't have one. You don't need one for sure. You don't even really need this but this is something that's really gonna just help your your drip tubes and your drip emitters stay cleaner. It's gonna catch any large debris. Um, so that just screws on the end here. And you can kind of set it up any way you want. Um, and then the last real piece of kind of our main our main drip system here is our regulator and this actually just regulates it down. This particular one regulates down to 25 psi from you know your average house that might be running like 60 or 70 psi. Um, this just is you know required because these drip emitters they're the tubing is quite small thin wall and it actually can't handle a lot of full pressure so these, these tubes are rated for 25 to 30 psi and this is a you know 25 psi regulator. Um, next, we just have another fitting that fits on the end here, and then we're going to plug our, our hose into it, and I'll show you that when we set everything all up. But that's kind of the, the heart, the brain, everything to our drip irrigation system. Um, the next thing that we have for our, our drip irrigation system, this is going to tee off and go into kind of our main feeder lines that are going to feed each of our raised beds. Um, and then once we actually get into the beds, we've got a couple different components here. So, let me drag these over here. Um, each of my beds are actually, each of the three beds that we just built, they're going to each have kind of this just a simple on-off valve. So, um, you know, maybe if I don't plant out one of my gardens right away, I can actually just turn this off. Or if I have, you know, some plants in one of my raised beds that maybe they require a little bit less water or maybe it's, you know, in, in a bit of a shady spot so it doesn't actually require as much water, I can kind of just turn this and throttle it down a little bit to get a little bit more control with that. Um, <clears throat> next, we just got some really simple compression fittings. Um, again, you guys don't have to go with the, you know, this style of drip irrigation system, but it's super easy to use. And these are cheap. These are, you know, 60 cents a piece. Um, and basically, all we do is how easy they are to use is literally they just kind of slide on the end here. And this stuff's a little bit cold. It's a little easier to work with when it's warm. But really, it just slides on the end, and that's in there, and that's sealed, and it's uh, you know watertight. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to run our main lines. We've got our brain that feeds our main lines, feeds our bed. 
Um, then it's going to come into kind of just a manifold with our single, our lines that, uh, with drip tubing. And this is kind of just a little chunk of our drip tubing here. And it's kind of hard to see, but there are actually little holes in here. And these are actually regulated. There's a little kind of filter in here that kind of regulates it. So they're pressure regulated to get kind of even flow throughout the whole system. Um, there are other kinds of drip irrigation systems like soft tubing um, that's a little bit softer wall. I would recommend this kind of half inch hard wall tubing because this is really what commercial farmers are using um, or a lot of commercial growers in greenhouses and stuff and this is good stuff that's going to last you know should last you five to ten years or even longer. Another, another type of drip irrigation that you have is actually um, just with a similar type of tubing but you actually uh, add in the drip emitters where you want. Um, I liked, I went with this because it was actually a little bit cheaper um, and so maybe a little bit less to manage. I don't have to go and punch a hole everywhere and put all these little drip emitters in where these are just already all evenly spaced out at one foot intervals. And then lastly um, we've got just our figure eight or our plugs for our end. So basically the way this works is we slide this on, we kink it down and we just slide that over there. So this is going to be uh, we're going to have four runs of this in each of our beds and this is going to kind of just kink off the water at the end so we're just going to have kind of these running down the length of our bed and that's going to be our drip irrigation system we're going to get started now by kind of getting some of our our main uh our, the main kind of brain central area set up here and getting uh, some of the main lines ran for our drip irrigation then we're going to jump into the soil and get back and wrap up the drip irrigation Okay, so we used our pickaxe here and we just kind of dug out a little trench. You'll notice we're only going a few inches down. You know, we're in Canada here, so we have to worry about frost. So um, if we wanted to install this and make it more permanent, it'd really have to be about four feet down, which there's no way I'm digging a, a trench four feet down for all this line. So what I do is we just kind of run this down a few inches below. It's, you know, it's out of the harm's way of any shovels or, you know, anything that's going to be going through the ground. And just at the, the end of the, in the fall, I just, you know, get an air compressor and we just actually blow the lines out and blow all the air out of the lines. So here we go with the uh, with the line. So we've just got our little trench here going into our raised bed. We're just going to run it underneath here, and we're just going to trim and set it up here. So um, this stuff's really super light, super easy to work with, and this is going to be handling the regulated water already. So this is kind of thin wall, thinner wall than what uh, piping and what you'd find in your house. Um, so we're just going to kind of get it roughly set up here. We're going to leave ourselves a little bit extra so that we can kind of finish everything off when we're done. Um, so really, I'm just using just a regular steak knife to cut this stuff, and I'm probably just going to cut maybe a you know a two foot chunk or so, and I just want to make sure that I cut it kind of straight, so it's not on an angle, so that I can get kind of a good seal. So there we go. We just cut it that easily, and we've got these small little compression fittings. These are a little bit different than the ones that we use on top of the ground. You can use both. You can bury both. Um, I just think this is a little cleaner finish, and it's you know probably less likely to get caught on something. So. Um, we're gonna push this in here and sometimes on a cooler day like it's cooling off here now because we're getting in the evening It's gonna be hard to push in so we'll see how this goes if, if you do have a hard time pushing these on you can just get a warm glass of water and kind of dip them in to soften them up a little bit So, Okay, there you go. You can see that we're nice and on we're past all three barbs and you know We're gonna have a water site a tight seal and one thing to keep in mind is you probably want to pressure test your um your water system before you cover it all up with dirt in case you have any leaks. Okay, so we've got our 90 on coming into our bed here and we're just gonna kind of put that down here. We've got a couple of these little staple things. Um, you know, they're, you know, 10 or 20 cents a piece. They're gonna just kind of keep everything a little nice and tidy for us. So they just go on here real nice and simple. Just kind of tap them in. There we go, we're nice and secure. I've got two for each, each of these feed lines coming up into the beds. So we can kind of get them where we want. There we go. So we've got our new, our main feed line coming into our bed here. Uh, we left a little bit extra just for now while we fill up the bed so we don't have to worry about, you know, covering our hole up with, uh, with dirt or our feed line. So we can just kind of pour this back to the back and that's really it. So this is kind of our main feed line coming into our bed. It's that simple. So we've got our drip irrigation main lines kind of roughed in. So you can see we've got our trenches here. We've got each of our supply lines coming into each of our beds, all three of them. Um, so we're, we're ready to fill these beds up with dirt. So we're gonna throw some dirt in here and then we're gonna finish off the drip irrigation. So let's get these things filled with dirt. All 
right, so it's day two here. We've got our raised beds put together yesterday. We got the soil in there and we've got the start of our drip irrigation going. Um, I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about the importance of your soil. So um, <clears throat> if you take a look at this soil, I'll just kind of tell you a little bit about what it is actually. Um, I'm lucky enough that my parents own a farm, so I've got some maybe some resources that a lot of you probably don't. Um, so what this soil is, I've just trucked in from my parents' farm. Um, it's just topsoil from you know one of our fields, of kind of the better, a better section of one of our fields, and it's actually mixed up with about um, probably about 30 to 35 percent of compost that I actually started last fall, which is comprised of um, some sheep manure, uh, so some some straw, sheep manure, and then some also um, some some turkey manure that we have. That's the, these are the livestock that we have on our farm, and it's actually got a lot of. Uh, uh, pine and wood chips in it. So this this stuff's been going for um, probably about nine months now, and I've been you know rotating it with the the tractor that you guys saw yesterday, um, and getting it all mixed up and, and and ready to go. And I want to talk to you guys about the importance of soil. Um, you know if you're gonna cheap out anywhere else, um, you know feel free to do so. You can get gardening for pretty cheap, but if you want to spend your money, spend it on your soil. It's the most important thing. Um, you know when it comes to your garden. So, you know, it's something where you want to really spend your money. And um, probably one of the other things I'm going to be doing to amend the soil is uh, I've got some of this stuff right here. Um, and it's this really fine, you know, black dusty powder. And it's not, I've never tried this stuff before. I've tried um, uh, rock dust before, which I've heard good things with. And I've, I've had good results with um, last year when I first started trying that. Um, and this has got some of the same stuff that the rock dust has in it. It's, it's got those trace minerals. Um, so a lot of the a lot of the soils these days are actually void of a lot of the trace minerals that used to be there um, in the soil. So these um, <clears throat> products like this are going to bring back some of the trace minerals in your soil. Your plants are going to uh, grow a little bit better. It's going to help kind of the, the bioculture that's in in your soil, and it's going to help promote good growth. So we're going to get this mixed in. I'm going to till it in. Um, some people don't like to till their gardens. This is this these since these are new beds. Um, I, I'm going to till them this year and probably next year I'll probably just kind of double shovel it or something, kind of mix it up a little bit. A lot of people don't like to, to mix up their gardens because it, you know you get in there and you're, you're killing a lot of your worms or you're really um, disrupting the culture that's going on in your soil. So, um, But since these are new beds I'm going to mix them up today. So we're going to mix them up, that's going to be our soil and then we're going to finish off with our irrigation. So we've got our bed all mixed up. We've got our, our compost mixed in there and we've got our, our drip irrigation stuff set up here. So I'm just going to kind of run down and, and show what we're actually doing on this system. So we've got, um, you come down here, these are some of the components I showed you guys earlier. Um, these are just really simple compression fittings with half inch uh, drip line tubing. So we've uh, got our main line coming into our bed here that we, we installed earlier. Um, we've got our shut off so we can actually control the flow of water to this bed so we can turn it off completely so um, maybe if we we're in between seasons depending on what I've got planted in each bed I could actually turn that off or I could actually kind of just kink it halfway and kind of control the flow in this particular bed and how much water I'm giving it um, and then it comes into this kind of this manifold it's really simple we've just got a bunch of our T fittings here and our last elbow to, to kind of kick it off so we've got four lines the beds four feet wide um, so we've got you know the lines are about a foot apart, and these drip. This drip line has uh, these drip. These regulated drip emitters built into it, and they're actually in one foot intervals. So we've actually kind of got um, kind of a one by one grid already. So if you're doing any square foot gardening, or you know really bio intensive gardening, um, you're already covered there. So it's kind of an imaginary grid already laid out in the system. So so all we did was we took our drip emitting line, we cut it at 16 foot lengths, so we've just run it down the entire length of the bed, and. It, uh, we come down here to these figure eights that we use just to kink off the lines. So they, they install super easily. They really just put one end on, kink it over, and throw it on, and that just kinks off the end. You could probably build this into a manifold system um, like we did on that end, um, and it would probably get you maybe a little bit better water flow, but 
Um, it's also more money on spending on the uh, on more fittings, and this works perfectly fine. We built these beds at four by 16. Um, the reason I've gone that way is a lot of people like to build small beds four by four, four by eight, or even four by 12. The reason I went four by 16 is mainly uh, for construction-wise, uh, the standard standard boards come in 16 foot lengths, but then also it kind of um, makes the drip irrigation system very easy. So I'm just, you know, instead of buying a whole bunch of fittings and valves for all these small little garden beds, I built, you know, larger size beds that um, enable me to not to have to buy a lot of fittings and have really integral drip irrigation system. So um, that's really about it. I want to talk to you guys. Maybe you can kind of see if you look down the lines, some of these are a little bit wavy or some are popped up in some spots. So we've got just these uh, shepherd's crooks, I guess is maybe what they're called. Um, and you can just go around and kind of stab them into the ground and kind of hold all your lines in place. Um, these are really cheap. Last year I made a whole bunch of my own. I had some like just fencing wire laying around and made a whole bunch of my own. So, you know, we've got options there. Um, if you want to save yourself a little bit of money. So there's our drip irrigation system and we're, we're fully set up here. So, um, you know, we're ready to start planting now. We can um, kind of amend our soil, mix it up and get our plants in the ground and we're good to go. All right, so that concludes the three part series on our building the raised bed garden. So we've shown you everything from site location, um, construction materials, the actual construction, the soil mixture that I'm using here and the installation of a drip irrigation system. So hopefully you guys learned something. Maybe you saw something that you hadn't seen before. Maybe you saw something I did that you didn't like. But uh, my goal is really just to kind of give you guys some of this information that you guys can get out there and start growing on your own. So I'm Adam from Homegrown and stay green.